Hey friends, it has been a hot minute since you and I have chatted with each other. I believe the last time you and I met, uh, Jason and I were celebrating our 10th wedding anniversary and we renewed our vows, which was really awesome, so magical. I shared the special behind the scenes uh, with my friend Liz on our podcast together, which is called The Beachy Mama, so that's going really well. We have five episodes, so that's exciting. Uh, this might be episode five. Who knows? I'm a procrastinator. I am the queen of procrastination. But for real, I am. <laughs> I am still broadcasting and recording in the slash office slash workout room slash rehab room. I am still dealing with a ba uh, jacked back, friends. I also need to go get an MRI, so I am just sitting on my referral. I have not called them back because, hi, I am the queen of procrastination. It is so, so bad. Uh, one thing I am trying to keep on top of my game, that is my counseling. If you saw my TikTok, you are up to date on what's happening. If you're not on TikTok, you're like, whoa, 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 back up, Coco, what happened? What happened was, is I had a little bit of an episode. <laughs> um, I am learning that your girl, Coco, is a queen of masking. And if I'm being 100% honest with you, it's because I have been on the radio and I have done a morning show and a midday show uh, on good days and bad days. And it's hard to bring joy for several hours a day when you don't really feel that joy in your heart. And so you mask it and just have to do with what you need to do to get through the day. And it just doesn't feel good. And it just gets, you just get used to it. And you don't realize you're doing that until you really look up and don't recognize who you are or that, um, little simple things are starting to make you feel a lot worse than they used to. And that's where I am at. I was going to say kind of, but that's where I'm at. Um, somebody very close to me told me that I need to get over my silly little feelings over my silliness. Uh, and that pissed me off. <laughs> uh, it pissed me off bad. Um, because it's not silly. To me, I was robbed of a $2,000 trip, a hard-earned trip that my husband and I worked very hard. Uh, can't trust you, won't trust you. So to me, it's not silliness. Those are big things that happens. And for you to not want to talk about it uh, when we're both ready is also not fair. I think that's something that Jason and I have learned together is that in a marriage, um, there are conversations that you have to have that you don't want to have, right? And so you're going to have to have that conversation and your partner, your spouse, your person needs to be ready to receive that conversation. And at the time, he may or may not be ready. And that's cool. But when he's ready, then we should be able to have one. Oh, man. But now I'm starting to veer off. Anyways, I just didn't handle uh, being told that my feelings were silly and that I needed to get over them. Uh, and so it made me just to kind of, it made me not kind of, it, I fell back into, uh, just talking negatively about myself, well, feeling that I'm not able to, uh, have meaningful relationships because this relationship was very close to me who said that I need to go over my silly feelings uh, or it used to be a close relationship and maybe one day it will be. Um, so that made me fall back into a depression and I'm not worthy to the point where the things that I was saying to my husband, um, it's hard for you to hear the things you said about yourself from your husband. Uh, it's like a dose of reality that you don't want to drink or hear or have any part of. Uh, cause again, remember I'm good at masking. It's not happening. I don't say those things about myself, right? But in reality, it is happening. Uh, so I'm back in counseling. I uh, specifically sought out a counselor that does cognitive behavior therapy um, into where we can uh, do some thought, th 
bot training so that when a situation does happen that my initial reaction isn't to fall back into what's comfortable and easy for me to mask, for me to go to um, a very destructive place in my mind. It's so gross what happens because I don't want my daughter uh, to feel this way. Uh, speaking of, I had a um, dear, dear, dear friend of mine uh, reach out to me Friday night and she needed help with her daughter uh, to the point where her daughter was suicidal, wrote it in a note, and she was self-harming herself that actual day. Uh, and I had to take her to the Driscoll ER department. I was terrified. I was terrified. This little baby is 11 years old and she's thinking of killing herself because she needs a break because she's tired. She doesn't know how to handle these feelings. She doesn't understand why she's having these feelings. She's being bullied. She's being picked on. Uh, she's not getting help from her school. Her, her mom doesn't even feel like she's getting any kind of guidance from the school. Uh, more to that story later, but I'm just sharing that I'm 40, right? And struggle with quote unquote silly feeding feelings or not being accepted or uh, she's too much. She's too loud. We don't just, we don't understand her, you know, different things like that. And she's 11 and she's talking about suicide. Sad. It hurts me. And I want to be able to have those conversations with my daughter. I'm so thankful that this 11 year old was brave enough to share with an adult and that I was able to answer the call so that I could jump into action, be able to uh, be there for that mom. Uh, something else that we talk about is just being encouraged by other moms, not compared. We should be encouraged by other moms that we're all going through the same thing. It just looks different. It has a different layer. But we're all just trying to raise healthy, smart, individual, loving, caring, courageous children in a world that's bombarded with what perfect looks like. That shit is fake. That's not what perfect looks like. That's not perfect. We all know that perfect doesn't exist. And as I'm saying that, I understand that. I know that. I know that. And that's why I want to get tools from this new counselor. And I think it's also just a reminder that if you're dealing with mental health or this is new to you, friend, I didn't start really dealing with any kind of mental health things and issues until my children came where my postpartum just snowballed into this beast of what the flip is even happening. I'm a Christian. I love the Lord. I know he's got good things for me. I know everything happens for a reason and a purpose. I know these things. I, I know he's got an amazing plan for me yet. I can sit stuck in that recliner and be sucked in by comparison and bull crap easy. I'll be the first one to admit that. But also when I take time off, it's where's Coco? What is she doing? How come we haven't heard from her? What's wrong? I heard this. I heard this happen. I heard this happen. You're right. It did happen. Those things did happen. I did have a miscarriage. I did have postpartum depression. I was scared. It was hard. I wasn't able to do X, Y, and Z. You're right. You're right. But guess what? I masked it and kept going to do what I thought I needed to get done. And even just taking a step back to figure out like, what does that even look like? It's still frustrating and hard for me because I've often shared this too. Like when you've been doing something for so long, and you start transitioning into something else and you're not even really sure what that is, but you know that you're not happy anymore. I just want to enjoy whatever the heck this is. I've been getting up and gardening uh, with Fox Farm Adventures. I mean, heck, since I think the last time you and I have chatted, we've had a viral 
gardening video, 3.1 million views of her planting freaking lemongrass in my backyard, which you're the first ones to know that I almost killed it, forgot to water it. People are asking for updates. There aren't any updates because I've almost killed the plant. <laughs> I wish I was lying. <laughs> um, but, you know, finding out what that this new part of my life looks like and not comparing what everybody else's success looks like and that my success looks different right now gardening helping out the twins school garden that's amazing i'm having being filled up with so much joy for that me being happy with just like being pressure free or my expectations aren't cutthroat. Does that make sense? I'm happy to see what this next part looks like, but also giving myself some grace. That's what my counselor just told me. And honestly, that's why we named our daughter Grace, is because how much grace God gives us. Yet, I don't remember that. But the good news is, is that I recognize that and I feel like every day is a new day to get better and stronger. And with that, I'm ready to share that I am stronger today than I was over a month ago. Um, as always, you need to chat with your doctor, make your own decisions. This isn't any medical advice. This is just something that I'm sharing. I even hate that I have to say that. Don't come at me for this decision that I made. It's something that I made on my own and I feel confident in it and I'm on the other side of it and I had people going through it with me so I am good um, but about two months ago I took myself off of all of uh, the prescribed medications from my psychiatrist um, I uh, ooh, I don't even know how to um, I wasn't feeling any better and I kept being told that we just need to try to try to find the right medication for you. Try to find the right medication for you. Try to find the right medication for you. And there's many that you're going to need to try and just keep trying a new medication for you. After trying a couple, I, I felt worse and I didn't want to do that shit anymore. I didn't want it to uh, just keep trying another medication. Again, this was just my decision. And I was watching young ladies share on TikTok how bad it was to get all five years of hardcore um, psychiatric medication. And I thought, I don't want that. I'm having a hard time uh, right now feeling good. So I made the decision. And I think it was supposed to happen at the right time. It was on the weekend and I was already just kind of off my schedule. So by Monday, I had already been off my meds for three days. Uh, and I was starting to already feel it. And I told Jason, I said, today's the day that I'm done and I'm just going to quit this cold turkey. I told my support group what I was doing and um, I prayed about it really hard. And I held on to the wildest ride to come off of uh, medicines like that. Uh, I have never had a detox from any kind of um, heavy, hardcore medication. I was on... Um, Effexor was one of the last ones I was on. And I'm so glad I was able to get off of that. I had a fuzzy brain. I mean, I'm still having pretty crazy mood swings, <laughs> which I've had my whole life. However, they were pretty flipping bad when I was coming off the meds. Um, I That's when I really threw myself into gardening with my friend, Leanne, who's also been down the similar uh, path. So if that's anything that I could share with you today is that when you're going through something, um, whatever traumatic or, or post-traumatic that's happening in your life, there's somebody that's been there and gone through it and they can hold your hand and it'll help you feel stronger. And that's what Leanne did for me. Uh, in more ways than one. Even on days I didn't even know what to say. And even on the mornings that I was just crying, you know, just come to the garden and dig and help me. 
And that's what I did for months, for mornings, for days, even when I didn't want to. Even on the mornings, I didn't understand what I was doing or why I was doing that. It was just trying to get back into a good routine uh, and being surrounded by positivity and life and things that were green and birds singing and the sunshine on my face. It was also right around that time that I decided to make the decision to walk away from radio. <laughs> now that I think about it, you know, everything happens for a reason, right? I'm not having to mask and pretend that I'm happy all the time. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. I think what's wrong with it is when you're not happy and people go, what's wrong with you? I think that's what makes it weird and wrong. Like, she's just chilling. She's just taking a break. And if you feel like you need to take a break, you need to tell somebody, hey, I need to take a break. I think we need to be better about just sharing how our feelings are. And of course, if that person that you're talking to needs some immediate help, you understand that, you know, calling 911 and getting immediate help is obviously what should be done. But even today, I hung out with a girlfriend and uh, she said, is this conversation helping or making it worse? I said, you know, honestly, it, both, really. <laughs> it's not that it's helping or it's making it worse. I think it's just that you want your friends to kind of understand where you're coming from. Does that make sense? Even with you, I hope you understand where I'm coming from. I hope you always know that I'm coming from a place of encouragement. And that's just a part how my trials can be triumphs for other people. And I understand that. And encourage you that counseling is good. That counseling as a couple is good. Uh, finding a chill for yourself is good. Finding a routine for yourself is good. Finding time to pour in self or pour, pouring into yourself is good. You know, even doing this podcast, I should find more time to do it, but I don't. I always feel like it needs to be perfect. You don't want perfect. You want just the realness, people being real, being vulnerable. No fake book over here, friends. No hiding behind the veil, friends. I mean, I want to hide under the covers many days. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. But I don't want to be robbed of the sunshine and the happiness, you know? So I think it's cool to like, we don't need to have such big expectations, give ourselves some grace. And when you're not feeling good, just say, hey, friend, I'm not feeling good and figure out what that help looks like for yourself. And maybe you, you're not able to be that honest and vulnerable with yourself to maybe you just start writing it down. Maybe send a text to your girlfriend and say, I don't really know how to say this, but I'm not happy right now. Just start there. But I encourage you, give yourself some grace. Give yourself a break. I don't want you feeling like that sweet little 11-year-old did where she's ready to take her life. I don't want that. I don't want that for my daughter. I don't want that for your daughter, your kids. I don't want that. Something has got to change. We're going to be sharing or talking more about uh, what we can do with our teens uh, with the Beachy Mamas, with my girlfriend Liz. Make sure you're checking out that podcast as well. I feel like there's some really good nuggets in that together uh, with moms, encouraging other moms and just other things, um, wipes and things like that. Just here on Coco's Corner, I'm just really sharing what I'm getting into. Gardening. Good. The good news is uh, Levi has finally pooped in the potty. Praise the Lord and the poop gods. <laughs> we had a big old poo-poo party or a... Um, potty party. My mother-in-law, grandma made a really cool toilet cake. The kids picked out potty prizes. My husband did curbside. Also, shout out to my husband listening about curbside. Just get it done, order it, we'll scoop it up, move on with our life. So, uh, you know, you really can teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, I just got some big news. I can't share it until July. Um, so I'm super excited about that. Also, if you are looking for uh, somebody who wants to keep it real, keep it fun, keep it light, keep it exciting, uh, for it to do your MC events, I am your girl. I'm going to start making a little extra side money on that. So if you want Coco to be your MC of your event, let me know. Uh, I'm just keeping it real. I just wanted to share with you today uh, things that were going on with me and my mental health. 
back in counseling. I'm about two months clean of hardcore medications. I am dabbling in some oils. <laughs> uh, also, my naturopath appointment went really, really, really well. I just, uh, I'm being honest with you, I can't afford that program yet because I still need to get an MRI. We're rolling over here on no insurance. This happens when you're self-employed. Um, so that's kind of like just where we're at on that. If I'm being 100% honest, which I believe I always have been. Uh, so just taking it day by day, uh, keeping plugged in with the devotion, listening to um, praise and worship music, uh, keeping plugged into a tiny circle uh, that respects me. I think that's a hard thing. And we can talk about this too. Maybe you've also felt like that too, is um, as we get older, our circle gets smaller. And I'm also struggling with that. Uh, people that were in my circle uh, are no longer in it. And I'm saddened uh, by that. I also feel betrayed uh, big time, which is a whole other thing. I'm in counseling, blah, blah, blah. So uh, anyways, even though I'm still going through some things, I can still find joy in other things. And I hope that you can do that as well. I'll be sharing more about my friends and her daughter um, in the next couple of weeks as we continue to pray for her and her healing. Uh, she was able to get in a bed at a uh, treatment facility for adolescents in uh, South Texas in the Valley. Uh, so I was thankful that that was able to happen. So she'll be there this week. Uh, so just prayers for our youth, man, that it is hard. Um, and also social media can just be really gross and really yucky. And that, oh, man, that's just, that's a whole nother subject too, isn't it, friends? All right. Thanks for listening. I hope you got across town perfectly safe. Of course, the person doesn't yield because they don't understand what the freaking yield sign is or they're running a red light. Thanks for listening. You got the safe. My name is Coco and I'll see you next time. Peace.